What is a PD pulse? Well, partial discharges create heat. We know that the sound, light, and all of these are pulses. But most importantly, they create an electromagnetic pulse. And when we measure partial discharges, we are usually using the electrical pulse. So let's talk about the electrical partial discharge pulse. So a partial discharge pulse is actually charge. And charge, the unit for charge is Coulomb, and charge is current times time. We know this, if you have a capacitor, we want to charge the capacitor, we need a current and a certain charging period, and if we want to have more charge, we need more current or more time. But let's look at how a partial discharge pulse looks like. So let's have this diagram and we're having time here, usually in seconds, and we have current here. A partial discharge pulse looks a little bit like this. And we have a height, or we have a, we have a value here, but most importantly is what is actually the area below the curve. So how do we measure the charge or how we calculate the charge? Charge Q is the integral of current that is changing over time. So obviously it's time one and time two. And as we know, it is kind of hard to measure a current in our world. It's or let's say it's rather complicated. And very often if you measure a current, what we do is we use a known resistor, a shunt, and measure the voltage drop over this very resistor. So we would have an R, 1 over R, and then we would take our voltage signal over time from time 1 to time 2. And this brings us to the point where this is no longer current, but this is actually and voltage. And if we solve this equation, if we want to obtain our charge here, we have to do an integration, get the area below the curve, and we are ending up with some kind of a Coulomb value. So x. Very often, or let's, let's see, hopefully, we are ending up with something which is called a picocoulomb value. What was pico? Well, here's a small overview about the indices. We can see kilo, we have milli, we have micro, we have uh, nano, and we have pico. So now we know that pico is 10 to the power of minus 12, and we hope that we're measuring in this area. Why is that? Well, different devices or different assets had, have different standards. We have the IEEE standards, we have the IEC standards, and example given for cables, medium voltage or high voltage cables, depending on what standard you're looking for, it is usually in the area between 5 and 10 picocoulomb. Meaning, if you produce a cable in the factory and you test the cable for partial discharges, the cable should not have more than 5 or 10 picocoulombs. As a matter of fact, it should have no partial discharges at all, but when these standards were written, um, the idea was that it's really hard to measure much low below 5 picocoulombs or much, much below 10 picocoulombs, so depending on the standard. Transformers, for example, depending on the size of the transformers, have different values. Um, current transformers or voltage transformers, so the rather small ones, they're in the area of 20, 30 to 50 picocoulombs, depending on if they're, if they're, if they're liquid insulation system or solid insulation system. And you have uh, power transformers, uh, usually they're filled with oil, and you usually have something around 100, 200, 300 picocoulombs of uh, admissible or allowable partial discharges. Um, so example given, there was a standard that says a power transformer shall not have more than 300 picocoulombs. If this is the case, the person who buys it can actually, uh, can actually say no. I'm not going to take this because it is, has a partial discharge value which is above standard. This being said, um, the standards are a very good guideline, but the person who buys it can actually determine on how much he wants. And sometimes they even say, well, I only want 150 picocoulombs at the most. Rotating machines is a little bit different. Rotating machines don't have a real value where above this, this is an issue. Very often you take rotating machines and try to quantify or qualify where the partial discharge is happening. If it's happening in the end windings and you have Mika as an insulation, this is not the worst thing in the world. However, if you have slot discharges or other discharges, then you have a problem. And that's 
Therefore, there is no real set value. It's only the idea of saying, okay, a, partial, a, a rotating machine should not have partial discharges in this and this area. So, to sum up, a partial discharge pulse, the electrical pulse, looks a little bit like that. We do an integration, otherwise we would only have a millivolt value, but uh, the standard us standards usually talk about a charge value, so we do the area below the curve, we come up with hopefully a picocoulomb value, and we do this for every single pulse happening. So, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully see you in another video.